Welcome to EduRev. Hi all, my name is Sarika Tulsiani. I have done MBA in marketing and I have completed engineering in computers. I have been an aptitude trainer since last five years. And today we are going to have a look at the part two of the number systems. We have discussed certain basic concepts in the part one of number systems. You can go and refer to that video. And once you're done with that, you can start with the current video so that we can have a look at the further concepts. Now let's continue with our sums. So this was what we were talking about in the previous video. Conversion from decimal systems to other systems. Okay, so let's look at the example. The example is given in a decimal system which is 43 to the base 10. We have to convert it to a base 16. Okay, we have to convert it to a hexadecimal base. Now, how do we convert it? Now, your number is 43. Okay, you have to convert it to a base 16. My question to you is. 16 ke table mein 43 se closest value ka baati hai. What is the value which is close to 43 in the table of 16 but it should be less than 43. So that is 16 twos are 32. Theek hai? So this will be 16 twos are 32. But I have to go up to 43. So I have to add 11 more. So what will I do? I will add 11. This will be 16 to the power 1 into this will be 16 to the power 0 because 16 acts as the base of the hexadecimal number system. So what will we do? We will pick 2 from here. We will pick 11 from here. But the number 11 is not written as 11. As we have seen in the hexadecimal system, number 11 is nothing but B. Dekho, 0 to 9 we use the numbers. Then A stands for 10, B stands for 11, C stands for 12 and so on. So this becomes 2B. So 43 to the base 10 is the same as 2B to the base 16. Now let's look at another question. They have given us such a big number and you have to convert it into a hexadecimal system again. So what do we do? I'll make a table here. Theke? I will divide 5, 5, 2, 7, 6 by 16. And whatever is the remainder, I will write that in the final column. Okay? So if I divide 16 by 5, 5, 2, 7, 6, this will be 16, 3 is a 48. I have 7 remaining. So I have 16, 4 is a 64. I have 87 remaining. 16, 5 is, a, is 80. I have 76 remaining. So 16 Forza is again 64. So I have 12 remaining. Okay, so my remainder is 12. Now 12 is nothing but C in hexadecimal. Okay, I will again divide 3, 4, 5, 4 by 16. So this will be 16 twos are 32. 2 is remaining. 16 ones are 16. I have 9 remaining. Then 16 um, Fiza is 80. I have 14 remaining. So 14 stands for E. Again you divide 215 by 16. So that will be 16 ones are 16. You have 55. So 16 threes are is 48. So you have 7 remaining and that's it. Later on 13 K is not divisible by 16. Okay? So 13 stands for what? 13 stands for D. So like I explained in the previous video also. You start with this and you move in this direction. So your first value will be D, then you will have 7, then you have E and then you have C. So your answer becomes D7EC to the base 16. So this is how you convert a decimal number to a hexadecimal number and if necessary you can use the variables or the alphabets as well. Okay? Now let's look at the conversion from binary to octal. Now this process is slightly different. Isme what will we do? We can club three digits of the binary number together into a single block and write the decimal equivalent of that. Meaning, see this is your example. So our number is 100 then uh, 1100. So what will we do? We'll start from the right hand side we will form blocks of three numbers. So this is your first block, 
this is your second block this is only one so you can put two zeros and we are going to convert it into octal so kya karenge dekho first zero will be multiplied to two square then again second zero will be multiplied to two raised to one and the third number which is one will be multiplied with two raised to zero ye to zero ho jayega this is also zero this is one so this value finally becomes one this is the same set so this will also become one and this is one zero zero so what will you write it as you will write it as one into two square plus baki ka both the values will be zero only because zero into anything is zero so here you will get a value of four so your answer becomes 114 to the base 8 so this is how you convert binary to octal now let's take one more example again we are going to form blocks of 3 so this is your first block this is your second block this is your third block now let's try to do it orally how will we do it dekho this first one will be multiplied with 2 square because it is at the hundreds place so 1 into 2 square will give you 4 second value is 0 and the third number will be multiplied with 2 raised to 0 which is 1 so 1 into 1 is 1 only so your number will become 5 okay your number will become 5 now let's look at the second set the first one will be multiplied with 2 square which is 4 second one will be multiplied with 2 raised to 1 which is 2 and the third will be a 0 so your final number becomes 6 Similarly for zero one zero, पहला तो zero ही है. Second number will be multiplied with two raised to one, which is two, and the third is a zero. So you are left with two. So this is your answer five sixty two to the base eight. So in this manner you can convert binary to octal. Now let's understand how to convert binary to hexadecimal. See for octal we were forming a group of three numbers. For hexadecimal, we are going to form form a block of four numbers. That's the only difference. So we are going to club four digits together. So we'll start from the right hand side again. So this is your first block. This is your second block. The rest of the entire process remains the same. So your first number is one 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 zero. Your next number is one one zero one. So the first one will be multiplied with two cube. Okay. Second one will be multiplied with two square. Third one will be multiplied with two raised to one, and the last will be a zero only. So this will be eight plus four, which is twelve, plus two, which is fourteen. Fourteen in hexadecimal stands for what? देखो, a is ten, b is eleven, c is twelve, d is thirteen. So fourteen stands for e. Similarly, if you talk about one one zero one, this one will be multiplied with two cube, this with two square, this with with two raised to one, and this will be two raised to zero. And finally, we are going to add them. So this will be two cube plus two square, which is eight plus four twelve, twelve, and this will be zero, because zero into anything is zero. So this will be eight plus four twelve, twelve plus this one will give you thirteen. ठीक है, so thirteen stands for what? Thirteen stands for D. ठीक, तो यह final answer will be E D to the base sixteen. So in this manner you can convert it to hexadecimal. Now, yes, what if we want to convert the fractional part to other base? ठीक है, so this is your decimal number, which is a fractional value because it is after the decimal point. and you have to convert it into binary abhi dekho after the decimal point hai isliye the 2 raised to minus 1 2 raised to minus 2 or 2 raised to minus 3 diya hai the point is the question is yahan pe kya aayega what into 2 raised to minus 1 what into 2 raised to minus 2 what into 2 raised to minus 3 what is your value binary value so let's understand suppose if i ask you what is 2 raised to minus 1 it is 1 upon 2 1 upon 2 kya hota hai 0.5 पॉइंट फाइव टू रेज टू माइनस टू इज वन अपॉइंट फोर विच इज हाफ ऑफ वन अपॉइंट टू तो पॉइंट फाइव का हाफ हो जाएगा पॉइंट टू फाइव ना टू रेज टू माइनस थ्री इज वन अपॉइंट टू क्यूब विच इज वन अपॉइंट एट 
So this will be half of 0.25, which is 0 0.125. Now I have to arrange these digits in such a way, these digits, so that they add up to 0 0.625. Now pay attention. 0 0.625 ke liye, I need a 0 0.5. But if it's 0 0.5, if I add 0 0.25, it will become 0 0.75. But I don't want 0 0.75. I want to only go up to 0 0.625. What if I add first and third? That is 0 0.5 and 0 0.125. I will get 0 0.625, which is my necessary number. So I use the first one. I use the third one. I did not use the second one. Okay, so that means here I'm going to multiply 1 with 2 raised to minus 1. Okay, so I will get 0.5. Milega. I didn't use the second one. So I'm going to multiply it with 0. So 0 into 2 raised to minus 2. And the third number will again be multiplied with 1 because I used it. So 1 into 2 raised to minus 3. So what did we use? Kya? We used 1. We used 0. We used 1. So our value becomes 101. But this is what? This is 0 0.625. So your binary value will also be 0 0.101 to the base 2. So in this manner, you can even convert the fractional part to any other base. Now, let's look at addition of numbers. Here, we are trying to add the binary numbers. Take a normal decimal numbers, hum log kaise add karte? it's a simple method. You just add the numbers, whatever is the carry, it goes to the next set of numbers and you add. But yahan pe kaise karenge? In binary numbers, you just have two numbers, zeros and ones. So you just have to deal with zero and one. So what do we do? So dekho, your number is one, zero, one, zero, one. The next number is one, double, zero. And I'm supposed to add both of them. So what will I do here? I will put two zeros. So 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 1. Dekho, 1 plus 1 will not 2. Nahi hoga. 1 plus 1 will not be 2. 0 will come here. And 1 will get carried. Okay? 1 plus 1 mein 0 will come down. And 1 will get carried. So 1, 0, 0. If you add, it will only be 1. And 1 plus 0 will again give you 1. So this is your answer 1 1 0 0 1 to the base 2. Okay? Similarly, if you see the next example 1 0 1 1 and 1 triple 0. If you add this 1 plus 0 is 1 1 plus 0 is 1 0 plus 0 is 0 1 plus 1 you'll put a 0 here and 1 will get carried and this 1 will come here. So your answer will be 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 to the base 2. So this is how you can add binary number or even ternary or even octal depending upon whatever base is given. Okay? okay. Now let's understand how to add the octal numbers. They have given us two octal numbers 743, 677 to the base 8. Okay? Now generally what happens is, see this is at the units place. So I've already written this as 8 raised to 0. This is at the tens place, so 8 raised to 1 because it's an octal system. Okay? So this represents the units, tens, hundreds and thousands as per the decimal. So this is the octal place values. Okay? So it represents the place values as per the octal system. Now CO stands for the carryover. So when we add, if there is anything carry, if there is any carry, that will be mentioned here. Now let's try to add these two numbers. Let's try to add 743 and 677. Now we'll start with the units place, which is 3 plus 7. Okay? 3 plus 7 as per the decimal system is 10. Correct? It is 10. Now my question is 10 to the base 10. So 10 in the decimal is what in octal? So, we have to convert it. So, how do we do it? In the 8 ke table, mein, 10 is the closest value. Kya hai? So, in the table of 8, the closest value to 10 is 8 itself. So, that will be 8 into 1, which is 8. But I need 2 extra, so plus 2. So, this will be 8 raised to 1 and this will be 8 raised to 0. So, these two give the place value. 
so your number will be 1 from here and 2 from here so your number becomes 12 so basically 3 plus 7 is 12 so 2 will be written here 1 will be carried here okay it will be the carryover now 7 plus 4 is 11 11 plus 1 is 12 so we have 12 to the base 10 is equal to what in octal same process 8 ke table mein 12 se closest value is 8 only so this will be 8 ones are 8 but I need 4 extra so I will add 4 into 8 raised to 0 this is 8 raised to 1 so again they give the place value so your number will be 1 from here and 4 from here so it becomes 14 so 4 will be written here 1 will be carried now you have 6 plus 7 13 plus 1 is 14 so you have 14 to the base 10 you have to convert it into octal so what do we do 8k table mein 14 se closest value again is 8 only so that is 8 ones are 8 but I need 6 extra so that will be 6 into 8 raised to 0 and this is 8 raised to 1 so I will take 1 from here I will take 6 from here so my number will become 16 to the base 8 wo octal mein. so I will write 6 here I will write 1 here so my final addition of these numbers is 1642 to the base 8. Okay? Now let's look at one important question. The question is, it's a cat level question. Is 14641 a perfect square in any base greater than 6? So if your base is greater than 6, will it form a perfect square? Now see, I don't know the base. The base could be 7, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, anything. Let's assume the base to be n. Okay, let's assume the base to be n. So your number is 14641. Now this is at the units place, tens place, hundreds place, thousands place, ten thousands place. So can I split the number as 1 into n raised to 4 plus 4 into n cube plus 6 into n square plus 4 into n raised to 1 plus 1 into n raised to 0. So had your base been 8, n ki jaga pe 8 aata. Had your base been 10, n ki jaga pe 10 aata. Because we don't know the base, we are taking it as n. So your value will be n raised to 4 plus 4n cube plus 6n square plus 4n plus 1. Correct? Now let me split this 6n square as 4n square plus 2n square. Okay, the remaining part will be as it is. So this will be n raised to 4. This will be 4n cube. This will be 4n and this will be 1. Now out of these three, I can take n square common. So I will have n square plus 4n plus 4. Okay, out of these two, I can take let's say 2 common. So I will have n square plus 2n okay? plus 1. Now this part is nothing but n plus 2 the whole square. The first n square will be as it is. Plus you will have 2 into n square plus 2n plus you have 1. So if you understand this entire expression is a formula or is an expansion of n square plus 2n plus 1 the whole square. So if you expand this, you will end up getting this. Okay? So I can conclude that 14641 can be written as n square plus 2n plus 1 the whole square. So because it can be written in the form of a perfect square, yes, it is definitely a perfect square. So this is how you can solve this problem. Now, yes, after this concept, after this chapter, after watching this video, I would request you to go and give as many mock tests as possible. Please practice the concepts by giving the tests. We have a lot of tests, over 10,000 plus questions for practice. And we have a lot of tests prepared by the EduRev educators who are really experienced and have developed really good content. So please go check that out and practice. 
so that you will realize whether you're really comfortable with this topic or not. And if you have any queries, you can write into support at eduref.in and also you can visit the website. The link is mentioned. I hope you've understood the part two of number systems. Thank you so much.